Okay, I'd like to uh, go ahead and show you another build I've been, uh, I just finished up or almost finished up today. Uh, this is my uh, Altair Duino, uh, Altair 8800 clone. Um, right now we just have the front panel there. You can see I have the, uh, the uh, bamboo box that it comes in and a few of the other accessories that are still in there. Um, so uh, this is a, an Altair 8800 clone. Um, and, uh, it took about maybe two hours or so to build it. Um, pretty nice little design. Um, it's got an acrylic front that's got a very nice matte finish with the silk screening on it. Uh, the switches, um, feel authentic. So they have the uh, momentary up and downs on the bottom and the, uh, single position or dual position and single throw switches on the top here. Um, our LEDs and, uh, of course the on off switch here. So on the back side here, uh, we have the Arduino Do. Um, and in this case, I'm actually just powering it directly from a 9-volt uh, connector. I don't actually have the power connector uh, soldered to it. That's actually going to mount inside the, uh, the bamboo box here. Um, so once I get that um, mounted in there, I'll go ahead and put that in there. I'm trying to decide if I want to drill holes for the, the four pins at the corner here um, into the back and then screw it in or how I want to mount that. I think that might be the way to do that. That, that might look pretty good. Um, and then uh, we have our Bluetooth module here. We have our SD module over here. Um, there's, there's probably 90 LEDs and each LED has a resistor and a transistor or two resistors and a transistor associated with it. So there's quite a bit of soldering there. You've got all the switches for the sense switches and, and the uh, uh, control switches. Uh, there's a few things I haven't actually soldered. There's some optional headers and things like that that you can put on here. I love how this is built. It's uh, It kind of reminds me of the uh, Cray Supercomputers Cordwood construction, or the old CDC computers. That's uh, uh, two two boards with the LEDs, um, um, you know, stacked in it. It'd be cool if there was resistors and, and the diodes and stuff were actually cordwood built like that too, but um, just kind of a cool thing. It, this actually gives it quite a bit of structural strength. These uh, LEDs have these little plastic sleeves on them. They're loose in there, but they they very they really help you put it together. Uh, when you put it in there, then you can um, put the uh, put the uh, chassis together with these uh, nylon screw terminals there or screw uh, posts, um, and that allows you to line everything. The other thing that I did is I actually used the switches themselves. They have uh, their own uh, uh, screw settings on uh, screw uh, uh, on the bottom here, and you can see I've got. These screws here, I, I can actually turn this up and adjust the height of this this panel here, um, so I can adjust those. And I've got those periodically throughout the machine to uh, to allow you to line that up a little bit better. That actually surprisingly makes it uh, pretty strong. I'm I'm really impressed with how strong that actually is. Um, so let's go ahead and fire this up and show you what it uh, what it does. So I'll just flip on my power switch here, master power, and there you can see the Arduino cycled all of its uh, I/O. Um, and then when it uh, booted up, it actually just displays random data. And in typical fashion, in an Ar in a uh, Altair 8800, we're just going to go ahead and hit reset, clear, and reset, um, and that resets it. So now in this case, I have um, some random data in address zero, um, but we're going to go ahead and uh, reset that. So let's go ahead and examine, make sure. Yeah, so address zero has a has a value of three in it right there. Um, if you're not familiar with the Altair, um, we, we use an octal numbering system for, um, we have the address and we have the data. So the address is a 16-bit address, and we break it up into bits of three, and each bit of three is an octal value of zero through seven. Um, and then, of course, because we have an odd number here, we have the uh, uh, one extra bit out here at the end. And then uh, for the data, we actually have um, uh, the eight bits, so we have three bits, three bits, and two bits. Again, same value as octal. So the largest value that we can store in here is, for example, a three. Um, and then the largest value in these is a seven. So 377 is the equivalent of decimal 255. So uh, let's go ahead and load address zero. So we'll put all the sense switches down and we will examine that spot in memory. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let's create a quick little program a very simple program that simply is a jump instruction to address three, and at address three, we'll have a jump instruction back to address zero. So the jump instruction is three, zero, three. 
So the last two cents, which is the, these being up, this is a two and a one. Uh, this gives us a value of three. There's nothing up here that's zero. And again, the two switches up is a value of three. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit deposit on that. And you can see now at address zero, we have a 303 in memory. Uh, so the next value we're gonna put in is address of three. And the Intel um, 88, um, you know, Intel 8008, 8080 machines, they have their little Indian, uh, which means we actually start with the little least significant digit first. So I'm going to load a three in the next spot in memory. And instead of hitting deposit, we're going to hit deposit next because we're already at address zero. I want to deposit this into address one. So we'll hit deposit next. And you can see we have a address one, a value of three. Um, and, and now we're going to go ahead and uh, deposit the next half of it. It's a 16-bit address, remember. So we, we deposited the low order bytes, and now we're going to deposit the high order bytes. Uh, for, and for address three, that's all zero. So we'll just go ahead and hit deposit next. And now we're going to go ahead and do that same jump instruction. It's an unconditional jump. So 303, we'll deposit next. And in this case, we're going to go back to address zero. So we'll make them all back to zero. Uh, we'll deposit next and deposit next. We have the low order and the high order. Okay, so that gives us our program. Let's go ahead and examine that. So at address uh, zero, we have a 303. Examine next, let's, let me see the next byte in memory. Uh, that's a three. Um, so we're going to jump to address three, low order, address zero, high order. And then at address three, you can see we're at address three here. This is the program, or the uh, uh, address and memory that we're currently active. And we're get, we've got another jump instruction back to zero, zero. Okay, so that's our entire program. Uh, when I run this, it should actually just highlight, uh, turn on these three LEDs because what it's actually doing is it's cycling uh, through those uh, basically six spots in memory continuously. So we're gonna go ahead and hit run here. And voila, there it is working. Uh, so we have our uh, Alt Arduino, it looks like it's uh, fully operational right here. We can actually stop the program. We can then single step the program. And you can see as I step this, it's cycling through the address space. Not only is it cycling through the address space, we see the values in memory as well as the status of the machine here. So, so as it cycles through, we, we turned off our memory read and back on. So, so we've got a, uh, looks like a fully operational Altair 8800 clone. Now, uh, in building this, there are a couple things that I've noticed that I, I really don't care for. Um, for one, the LEDs are incredibly bright. I mean, this is really, really bright compared to the original machine. Um, so I might actually go in and uh, change the resistor values on these to cut them down, <laughs> probably by 50%. You know, I have the real 8800 um, in my uh, museum, and they're obviously LEDs from 1975, so they're not anywhere near this powerful. Um, so I, I kind of like to get the more realistic feel. Uh, on the lines of the more realistic feel, one of them is the uh, the aesthetics of it. And that's, in this case, we have these four screws that actually hold this together. Now, unfortunately, we have a Altair silver badge, which is, uh, you know, kind of one of the more key things of the Altair. And in this case, if I put this in there, these screws are gonna be right in its way. So I really don't wanna mar this surface up with the screws hanging through it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these screws out. They're just plastic, uh, like nylon screws. Um, and I'm gonna actually mill or uh, uh, countersink these using my Microsoft countersink, uh, mill right into this, this acrylic um, and, and actually make that a uh, flush mounted screw. Uh, that way, this screw and this screw are actually hidden behind that sticker once I apply it in place. And then what I'll do is I'll get some uh, um, black screws that are countersunk here that are slotted so that it, you you barely see that. Um, it, it's going to it's actually going to look pretty good. I think those will hide away real nicely. So between the bright LEDs and the and these screws, um, those are the only two things that I've actually noticed that I I, I really would wish would change. Now it is uh, just a shade smaller than the original machine. Um, so it is, is, you know, it's not to scale if you will, but I think this, it absolutely looks fantastic. And when it's placed inside of this uh, bamboo box, let me just go ahead and show you what that looks like. So we'll, uh, 
remove the power here. And I have these, uh, I need to take these off here, these uh, corner posts, because they'll, they'll prevent it from setting down in there all the way. <laughs> it's kind of difficult to do with one hand. So there we go. So there I've set it down completely in there. Now I, I made a mistake. I, I uh, when I un unscrewed it, that actually removed the back panel, so I didn't put nuts in there, so the board fell through. But here you can see it actually fits perfectly in this uh, bamboo box. It's a, it's a real nice fit. Um, it did real, real quality job on that. Um, now I went ahead and went to the store yesterday, and I, I bought some uh, rattle can paint. So I bought some of this. Uh, Rust-Oleum Blue, and I bought uh, some uh, Rust-Oleum Beige here, and uh, hopefully what that'll do is, um, uh, once I spray paint this with those two colors, you can see the colors are pretty close to the original colors of the Altair case. I'll go ahead and mask this off. I'll prime it so that it seals it. So we'll seal it, prime it, and then I'll paint it with uh, the blue first, which will... Um, then get masked off to paint the white. So we'll, we'll kind of make it look like an Altair. I think that'll look really cool. Uh, make it look like a little tiny uh, actual Altair 8800. So um, that is my um, Altair Duino clone. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.